Hello, good uh, good evening. <clears throat> this is Mark McNaught speaking. This is the uh, this is the third of a series on towards a, a written constitution for a Scottish secular republic. Uh, today, I'm going to do a couple of things. I first want to speak. Uh, I want to finish last week's um, uh, a, a show about uh, about having uh, how to uh, pre prevent corruption in an independent Scotland. Uh, and then I would like to respond to some of the comments that I've seen on Twitter and Facebook uh, regarding um, my views on Scotland becoming a, uh, a, a secular republic. And I wanted to explain, uh, and th th there was suggestion that that would somehow divide the, uh, the, the um, you know the independence movement, uh, but I just wanted to uh, over if, if we deal with questions like that uh, before a referendum. Uh, but I just wanted to explain my views on on why I think that would be the the, the proper um, uh, the proper form of government for Scotland, and I will explain I'll explain why. Uh, so first of all, I wanted to finish off about uh, about corruption and specifically about the uh, the ways in which. Uh, I've seen certainly in the United States and to a large degree the Westminster Parliament as well is the is the, is the simple corruption of uh, politicians and the fact that so many of them uh, count for campaign money uh, and uh, and uh, 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 are basically bought often by uh, by corporations. It's different in the United States uh, than here because the campaign excuse me the campaign finance system is different in the United States than here. Uh, but uh, but uh, but the um, but it's important that uh, I in order to avoid uh, the the collusion between big business and uh, and and large uh, very wealthy uh, private interests that there be uh, uh, that there be a, a, a strict wall a very str strong constitutional wall between the representatives of the people and the the corporations and and other big businesses which uh, which they seek to uh, they seek to regulate and we can see in Great Britain, uh, in the UK government, how um, the, the degree to which the uh, both the House of Lords and House of Commons has become corrupted because so many of them are uh, so many of them have second jobs. So many of them are on the boards of different hedge funds and different um, and, and different uh, special interests. Uh, and so, uh, and, th and therefore, there there needs to be a uh, a, 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 a constitutional requirements that uh, that that the parliamentarians not have any uh, connection with these uh, these groups that they would uh, that they would um, that, they, that they would regulate. So, uh, and and one one of the ways of doing this, uh, for, first of all, is simply to have a uh, a, a constitutional uh, mandate that all. Uh, pol all candidates and all politicians must reveal all of their uh, assets, whether they're offshore, whether they're onshore, and uh, and, and and so that, that we can it can be clear what uh, you know where you know what what their wealth is. There's nothing wrong with uh, some of somebody wealthy running for office, but it has to be clear. It has to be absolutely clear what their assets are, uh, where they're held, and uh, so that, 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 that so that uh, you know, and there must be complete transparency on. Uh, over these, uh, over the, over the, over the politicians in their and their offices, and and also there has to be real sanctions for uh, if they're if they're caught in violation of that. If the if it turns out that they made uh, in, in false statements, uh, knowingly false statements on their assets, they should be re simply removed from office. Whereas, um, uh, and so and and so this would go a long way towards again erecting a very strong wall between the people's representatives and the. Um, uh, and and the and the and the businesses and, and uh, enterprises that uh, they they would uh, they would they would regulate, and we can see in the United States how this is how there have been laws in the past, but they've just basically broken down and there and and, and simply put, there's no you have uh, and and the campaign finance laws uh, such as they are such as they exist in the United States are virtually unenforceable, which allows for huge amounts of dark money to flow into the political process, dark money. Being being money that we don't, you know, you don't know where it comes from, and there's no, and there aren't, aren't the necessary transparency laws required to find out where a lot of this money came from. Uh, a, 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 an example of that closer to home was the, um, was for example the uh, during the Brexit referendum, the, the the DUP in Northern Ireland received some half million uh, pounds, I don't know exactly how much, uh, fr from a source that that fund, and when we don't know what the source is because there are the transparency laws are different 
different in Northern Ireland than they are in the rest of the UK. And so having an absolute constitutional requirement that, uh, that, that, we, that all money spent on campaigns is declared where it comes from uh, and all of the, and, um, so that we know exactly what the, what, what the money is, uh, you know, comes from. Another example, more recent, of course, uh, much closer to home is the Scotland in Union group that has been recently found out that uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, there was spreadsheets sent to wings over Scotland and other uh, out, uh, groups, and uh, which it indicated that the, the that uh, Scotland and Union is, is financed largely by uh, you know lords and uh, uh, and very rich individuals who like to maintain the status quo, and so um, and uh, and so this is just an example of how. Uh, of of the uh, of the types of organizations which should be better regulated so that we know where the money's coming from we can see how and it and it's and transparent how it's spent and the, the, to uh f f to again to avoid uh corruption uh, also, uh, politicians should only be able to have one post. I mean, and, and they should be—they should certainly divest of any uh, of any um, you know other uh, other um, holdings that they have before uh, before taking office, as, so that there is no conflict of interest. We can see how badly this uh, it, this problem has um, arguably gotten worse in the UK, where you have many lords and again and uh, uh, parliamentarians who simply do not. Um, uh, who who are on on multiple boards? You have, for example, um, a Theresa May's uh, husband who's uh, on some uh, who's member uh, who's on the board of some hedge funds. Uh, you've got Jeremy uh, Jeremy Hunt uh, who is uh, pro basically privatizing the uh, the, um, the the NHS in England, and so again you have so much scope uh, and and actual corruption in the UK, and there and, and while a constitution cannot change uh, people you know human nature it, it can uh, it can include rules and other provisions which could make for, uh, make for a much more honest government than the than the UK certainly than the UK currently enjoys and I think and and to a large extent I think that this uh, from what I've seen of the Scottish government it's very it's much more like this there are uh, I think there's uh, you know at least the code of conduct that that is in the Scottish government it seems to be more effective and better informed than it is in the uh, in the UK government. So I mean, I, I think that a lot of times, a lot of, in, in a lot of cases, this would simply be in con constitutionalizing what is good, you know, decent practice in the uh, largely in the in the Scottish government. So, uh, but making this constitutional would go a long way towards uh, towards uh, again making for a much a uh, more less uh, much less co corrupt government than 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 the UK is and certainly than the than the United States is so just uh, again so broadly speaking just general of, to avoid uh, corporate corruption just having a very uh, a, a complete transparency of, uh, of of funding uh from the from any groups that that are registered to to participate in the political process uh, the uh, the transparency of uh, the finances of of candidates and politicians that um, uh, in the in the Scottish Parliament that the, uh, and uh, and and all and also avoiding conflicts of interest requiring that they have only one job and you know that they are they're only uh, working you know for the for the people who elected them and not for different uh, corporations so. So these are just a few ideas, and uh, again, uh, and so I hope that uh, that, that they, these will be considered when uh, when uh, drafting a a, uh, a constitution. Okay, so uh, um, that's that that completes my uh, comments on on corruption and what you know what types of constitutional measures could be employed. Uh, I'd now like to talk uh, the, about a uh, about why I believe that the that the Scottish uh, once uh, Scotland becomes independent. Assuming they do that, that it become a secular republic. Now, um, let's just take each of those in in turn. Uh, so, a republic, and of course, the that comes from res publica, or the you know the the, the public place, if you will. And uh, and 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 I think that the, it's important to have a republic. I was speaking to uh, Elliot Bomer uh, two weeks ago, and he suggested that they could you could maintain the monarchy and have. 
a republic, and I and I, I assume that 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 that's still possible. But I, I think that the most fundamental reason why there, it should be that the United sorry that an independent Scotland should be a republic and should not no longer have uh, the, the the any monarchy or any any hint of a monarchy was to, simply because that, that would assure that the, that the sovereignty would truly be within the people. Now, as you are, I'm sure you're aware. Uh, as I was making the point a couple of weeks ago, uh, Scotland, the sovereign uh, Scottish people do not have sovereignty, at least under the UK system. It's the Crown and Parliament which has sovereignty. I mean, that's the notion of parliamentary sovereignty it holds that the, the you know the the Parliament that is the the House of Lords, the House of Commons, and the Crown have sovereignty under the system the people don't and they never really uh, and they never really have and so you have proclamations of of you know so, of people of of popular sovereignty in great britain but from a legal point of view it's it, the, the people are not sovereign it is the it is the queen uh currently and it will be prince charles uh, frighteningly when the queen abdicates or um keels so um uh, so I think that it's important to have a republic just to uh, to assure uh, for now and for future generations that 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 there is true uh, popular sovereignty. Uh, and so uh, and and so these uh, Scotland should have uh, an elected head of state. And, and there's diff certainly different models for what a, a president uh, could be. Uh, a, a, the, you have a more a stronger presidency in the United States. You have countries like Israel and um, and Ireland, which have relatively weak uh, presidencies that are you know that have certain functions but are largely cer ceremonial and representative. Uh, so I, again, there's certainly different models that that Scotland can look to when just determining what the specific powers of the president uh, could be. But they could be largely along the same as the as the Queen uh, as the as the qu Queen currently holds, uh, largely ceremonial. Maybe perhaps uh, you know playing some role in the legislative process. Up again, that's that's the kind of things that can be determined at any constitutional uh, convention. But I do think it's it, it, in order to de definitively, uh, um, uh, resolutely affirm popular sovereignty I, of, of the Scottish people once uh, in, in independence is achieved. I think it's absolutely necessary for it to be a republic with a uh, with a uh, with a. Um, a head of state uh, chosen by uh, the Scottish people, and uh, and needless to say, I, uh, the the the, uh, the arist aristocratic um, uh, privilege should be abolished in in independent Scotland. You have, of course, the d different lords uh, in uh, Scotland, uh, regrettably, uh, and uh, and and they they uh, once Scotland becomes independent, they should be able to call themselves whatever they want, but their titles should be not be recognized for any purpose uh, by the Scottish government as they are with the uh, uh, with the British government uh, with, with the UK government so uh, uh, and uh, and so that w this is I think this would be a very important step again in terms of um, guaranteeing or you know better guaranteeing legal equality in the UK system you have again you still have this aristocratic nonsense of you know dukes and Earls and all that stuff that should have that should have been abolished several centuries ago. I, uh, uh, France got rid of that, you know, the aristocracy or at least their formal power back in 1789. Uh, but for some reason, the UK has not seen it uh, fit to come into the modern world and abolish the aristocratic system. And it's still and you still have you know large landowners, um, you know, uh, do, uh, these aristocracy owning huge amounts of land, especially in Scotland where. The ownership of land is some of the, is some of the most unequal in the world, and simply uh, uh, abolishing aristocratic privilege uh, in, in, in in independent Scotland is again simply rec not recognizing that they, that they have titles. Again, they can call themselves what they want. If the Duke of Bukaluk wants to call himself the Duke of Bukaluk, that's fine. But you know, uh, but it should not. They should not have any uh, power, any more, um, any more power or any more influence than any other. A citizen in an independent Scotland. It should be the, and so the constitution should be shaped to be much more egalitarian. And this by definition would require the, uh, the you know, the abolition of aristocratic privilege in a republic. And, um, 
and we could, and and so what now whether uh, and okay so now I'd like to speak about the notion of of secularism and why I feel that uh, that it is my view that Scotland should be a secular now at first it needs to I need to specify what that means or at least my interpretation of what secular is uh, and um, and and at first of all I, I just want to emphasize from the beginning it is not anti-religious it is in in, in fact it's it, it mostly if I could you know summarize what secular means. It simply means that the state, the Scottish state, would be neutral towards religions. And whereas, in uh, of course, you do have a uh, an established church in Scotland. Of course, the Presbyterian Church is established. Very few people go, but it is still technically the official church of Scotland. And of course, you have the Anglican Church in England, of which the Queen is the head of the Anglican Church. Now, it, it can easily be argued that um, that that, that, that uh, you know very few people actually go. To these, you know, established churches, and so they're, they're uh, but uh, but the very fact that they are the official church of the state already, uh, d by definition, implies that they're a favored church in one way or another. Uh, and so I think that it's and so and so certain certainly not having an established church in an independent Scotland would be uh, would be important, making it uh, you know making it secular, uh, and, but but also. The treatment of religion, uh, different religious groups, uh, would also it, it would also need to be done in a sec uh, in, a, in a secular nature, again, um, uh, uh, which implies again the the uh, the uh, equal treatment. Uh, so the um, so so again sec secularism uh, implies that uh, that the that the state be neutral towards religion that it not have an established church and that it, it that it and it treats all churches uh, equitably and um, and uh, it, it equal, equally before the law. Now we see and and I think that France has a pretty good model for secularism and uh, and I'll just give talk a little. I of course live in France and so I can uh, you know and I've also lived in the United States and seen their version of a version of secularism and in France. Uh, comparing uh, France to the United States in terms of it, it's uh, considered a more it's certainly a, 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 in a more secular country in the sense that especially uh, if you look at education, for example, in um, in 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 France you they, they, you don't uh, you do have private schools which are are run by the largely run by the Catholic Church, but they have to follow exactly the same curriculum as the as the state run schools, and and uh, you. Can't can have, um, I think, I think uh, in the Catholic schools you can't have the option of going to mass or catechism or what, what have you. But it's certainly not ob obligatory, and they can't, you know, f they certainly can't force any student to uh, uh, to to go there. Uh, also, with regard to, of its treatment of religion, uh, uh, there uh, the uh, the there is a more. It does tend to be more. Um, the, 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 the idea of, um, uh, let's see, how, how do I put this best? The, uh, the, the treatment of religion in, in public, it's, it's, it's considered much more of a private thing. Uh, and, and, uh, so people are more than welcome to worship as they please within the church. But there, there, in France, there's a very a, a strong reluctance to have it spill over into the, uh, public sphere. Uh, and so you, you have had, uh, for example, the banning of veils in, um, in in public spaces, you and you have other, uh, and for example, the way that people are allowed to dress in school is somewhat more uh, is somewhat more controlled than it is. And this is to keep again, this is to keep a strong separation of uh, of church and state, which has the effect of again protecting religions uh, and and not having any one favored uh, religion. I'm not sure that uh, maybe Scotland wouldn't maybe quite go as far as France in separating church and state but again it's just it's just a model that one could to look to to when thinking about how to make a scottish state more secular and uh, i think to and as as it was with uh, with other aspects i think the, the scottish government as it as it is as a devolved government is quite secular you don't uh, you certainly don't have the same degrees of uh, religious expression that you would have in the um in the uh, in the um, uh, in in the American uh, government, for example, uh, so 
Um, so, uh, so it's just a, it, it's just a good reflection of how, um, again, how things that are are already largely the case. For example, the secular nature of the Scottish government would simply would, could be uh, could be constitutionalized so that forever um, erecting a strong wall uh, between uh, church and state uh, that, uh, that that will get, that again will not will not favor one religion or the other, uh, and hopefully over time could go towards uh, be, uh, you know having le uh, less sectarianism in, within Scottish society more broadly, maybe ultimately to where the you know the, there is no there are no longer faith schools that uh, and that religion is seen much more of as a as a private. Uh, affair that people are more that are uh, are are certainly more than will, uh, more than free and uh, to engage in, but something that does not cause the same type types of divisions that it has certainly has in in the in in you know in 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 centuries past. So, um, and I think that again, est establishing a solidly secular uh, government would go a long way towards that uh, with a with a Scottish constitution so just to uh, just so just to uh, re, uh, um, just to summarize I believe that uh, Scotland should be a republic uh, primarily so that it, 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 that it categorically affirms the sovereignty of the Scottish people as the sole basis for legitimacy of the Scottish state rather than having this bizarre brew that they have in the UK with the you know the crown and uh, you know and basically still love living under the notion of divine Divine right, uh, whereas in Scotland you could simply have sovereignty of the people as a as a as a basic fundamental um, value of the Scottish state, and uh, and, and again to where to true sovereignty could be uh, recognized and, and affirmed in a Scottish constitution. And with regard to secularism, as I as I said before, this is not to do anything to do with anti-religious, but it simply means religious neutrality uh, with regard to the state and its dealings with religions. However, uh, religious freedom should be as absolute as possible, as long as the churches themselves follow secular law uh, and 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 so these are other important provisions that should be put in uh, the idea for example before with all of the you know horrific uh, pedophile priest um, um, allegations and and uh, and scandals uh, that uh, that it's clear that uh, the church authorities should have to live under secular law uh, and that the things like you know um, sexual abuse should never ever be able to be hidden behind the veil of uh, of religion. So um, so uh, so I and I think that um, so Scotland should you know once independence is achieved. All of these questions um, will, you know, be raised of what, you know, what type of state uh, that, that will be created. But, it, but as I said, as I've said in previous uh, talks, the, 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 there will no longer be any precedent in the sense that you, you're not Scotland will not be obliged to keep the Queen or the monarchy. Uh, that's, you know, and uh, and they can and Scots can uh, create a a modern uh, again secular republic that will be, you know, that, that could be genuinely a model in the modern world, uh, which can keep uh, corruption as low as possible, uh, and 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 just learn from all of the other countries and and its constitutional systems and what works, what doesn't, and what could prove effective in making. Uh, the Scottish government as 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 democratic as is humanly possible, uh, given you know uh, with with uh, me with me constitutional mechanisms that would promote it. It's sort of like I mean you could sort of envision it as like the, a constitution as being like the you know the plumbing in your house or the wiring in your house and and uh, and the, you know just the way the you know uh, the way the system works. And so it's really important to get these to get uh, to get from the beginning these constitutional principles uh, anchored and uh, and well designed. And I think it's fast. I think it's a good thing to start speaking about it now. Uh, and what kind of Scotland could be produced? Because you can be sure that once a once there is a yes vote that there will be you know banks trying to influence uh, big companies trying to influence the way the constitution is written and uh, and to to favor them and so we need to you know begin this you know have this conversation aside from the major the the companies and groups which will try to influence uh, the way a scottish government is uh, is 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 ultimately uh, constituted
Okay. So that's all for uh, this week. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I look forward to uh, uh, come join me next week. Uh, but I just, uh, and, um, and, and again, send in any, uh, my email is mmcnaught number one at gmail.com. If you have any questions or ideas to put forth, uh, please do. Also, you can go to the Independence Live blog and have a look at the draft constitution that I've been working on. I'd be more than delighted to have any uh, comments or, or questions or suggestions for changing it, uh, you know, because that, that, I'm always welcoming good ideas. So on that note, thank you very much, and I, uh, I will be back next week. Bye-bye.